On this episode, I'm going to give you the top reasons and advantages for adding a second, third, or even a fourth storage drive to your system. Not only does this add space, but adding more SSDs helps boost performance and adds protection to your production computer's data. Before I continue, I have to preface with this critical disclaimer. With any of the solutions I'm about to mention, you should always keep backups following the 3 to one backup strategy. Three copies of your data, two different media types, one backup offsite. This is something you should do for the rest of your life, just like eating food with ibuprofen. I'm going to focus mainly on solid state drives and not mechanical drives because the read and write speeds are tremendously faster on solid state drives than on mechanical ones. And because SSDs are more affordable than ever, the benefits of adding a second SSD far outweigh the cost. I'll reserve mechanical drives as more of a backup solution. Now, there are other factors that contribute to system performance, like how much RAM you have, CPU speed, the number of cores, and let's not forget, the GPU. Additionally, there are other things that most everyone overlooks, like data access patterns, I.O. controllers, and software support. However, SSD storage is one of the most important upgrades because not only can it improve performance, but it can also save you from data loss and downtime with the reasons I'm going to give you. So let's begin with what should be considered a standard, and that is the two drive setup. This setup consists of a system SSD on which your operating system is installed, and a secondary SSD for saving your files or projects, as well as hosting samples if you're into music production or raw footage if you're producing visual content. If your system drive is a mechanical drive, I would strongly suggest to clone it onto a solid state drive for this setup to work most effectively. The advantage this setup gives you is better performance efficiency because each hard drive port interacts with the platform controller hub or PCH for short. Sometimes it can be referred to by its legacy name, Southbridge. On newer motherboards, since 2009, PCH architecture was optimized for using multiple hard drives or SSDs to significantly improve performance by allowing simultaneous data access and transfer, utilizing caching both outside and inside the drive. The level of performance you will get depends on factors I have already mentioned and, of course, the design of your PCH. All this technical talk results in faster and more continuous read and write operations with less bottlenecks and less impact on workflow due to parallel processing that enhances overall SSD performance and responsiveness in storage intensive tasks when multiple drives are connected. In practical workflow terms, this translates to lower latency for audio and video production, live playing, and real time monitoring. You will therefore experience fewer audio glitches like crackles, pops, dropouts, and reduced stuttering when working with video, especially when RAM resources require access to storage data. Some people may argue that using NVMe drives can invalidate what I said because NVMe SSDs contribute to reducing latency issues due to their ability to simultaneously read and write data. While this may be true, it is only true to a certain point. Yes, for some projects, modern NVMe drives can achieve comparable performance with a single drive, eliminating the need for running two drives, but when you're running hundreds of tracks, reading and writing huge video files, it's possible you may still run into latency issues, especially when trying to play live with lower buffer settings. Although running a single NVMe drive may match the performance efficiency of two drives, you would be sacrificing the additional benefits that follow next. The second advantage is longer drive lifespan. With two drives, you don't wear out either drive as much as your file writing goes toward its own TBW allowance instead of consuming the system drive's TBW. TBW stands for Total Bytes Written. SSD manufacturers use that term to determine SSD endurance. What this means for you is longer drive lifespan, providing peace of mind and money saved from not needing to replace drives. The third and most obvious advantage is the increased storage space. Having more empty space means you can save more files. But there's also another technical reason that is often overlooked. Having empty space on an SSD means there are more cells available for writing before the first empty cell is overwritten. If you're not familiar with how SSD technology operates, in essence, SSDs use a process called wear leveling to ensure data is written evenly across all cells. Instead of starting from the first cell, they distribute write operations across available cells to prevent specific cells from wearing out prematurely, which prolongs the lifespan of the SSD. 
This is why most IT professionals recommend leaving 20 to 30% of your SSD empty if you're actively using it for writing files. Two drive types that should follow this rule are system drives and project drives. By the way, 20 to 30% is a minimum recommendation. I find that 50% free on my system has always left me well below the recommended minimum, even after essential software upgrades and unexpected data allocations by software. The fourth advantage is convenient upgrading. When the drive you use to save samples, video footage, and projects gets full, upgrading is as easy as cloning it onto a larger drive. What this means for you is less downtime and less risk moving your system files to a new drive if you only used a single drive. If you're familiar with Murphy's Law stated by the following colloquial expression, what can go wrong will go wrong, then you know if something has the potential to go wrong, it's probable that it will at some point. Now the disadvantage of this setup is that it lacks a backup system. However, I have a great solution later in this episode. Also, there's an additional cost. And lastly, because you're using an SSD, data recovery can be more of a challenge. This is why backups are so important. Without getting too technical, while mechanical drives can have the data extracted from the platters inside, there's less of a chance to do something similar to solid state stored cells. Still, SSD storage by today's standards is very safe and secure. I just feel that it's my duty to mention this though. Don't lose sleep over this. Like I said, I have a great solution. Before moving on, I have to say that although this two drive setup is as basic as it gets, I consider it a minimum essential for efficient content creation. Now let's talk about the three drive setup. It's identical to the two drive setup with one more drive for sample libraries, raw footage, or reusable content. The first and probably most sought after advantage is improved performance because your samples or raw footage, in other words, your reusable assets, now live on their own drive. This means your assets SSD can load samples or visual content while your projects can do the same from its own SSD. This provides an improved read-write efficiency than just the two drive setup. Again, this is all dependent on the type of IO controller your motherboard was designed with but generally, this will still be a more efficient setup. However, performance will vary depending on the things I have already mentioned. See, this gets complicated. Yes, NVMe SSDs can pull double duty, but you're forfeiting other practical advantages like space and data integrity due to less wear and tear. Here's a pro tip. Before buying anything, see if what you're buying benefits you by extensively researching. Sometimes, performance improvement is just a setting away and not a purchase. For those of you who use DaVinci Resolve, take note. You don't have to get the latest video card to reduce stuttering. Just turn on proxies. That alone could save someone at least $1,500. Now, the second advantage is just a repeat of what I said before, and that is convenient upgrading. If your assets library needs more room or starts approaching 20-30% to 30 of its maximum capacity, Upgrading is just cloning or copying your files onto a bigger drive. Again, as before, it just avoids touching the system drive. And of course, the disadvantages are that you still have no redundancy if something fails. Again, make backups. And, obviously, an even higher cost. And now, the 4-drive setup. This is the one that I use for every build. The added advantage of this is that the 4th drive is mirroring your project's drive, at the very least. This was the solution I was talking about every time I mentioned the lack of a backup system. Now, if the drive is large enough, it can also save images of your system drive and daily incremental backups with backup management software. The advantage of this type of setup goes without saying. If anything, I mean anything, goes wrong, there is no data loss, as long as the drive doesn't fail, obviously. However, for this particular drive, I would recommend a mechanical drive, not an SSD. The reason being that mechanical drives give more warnings before failure. Yes, the smart feature works sufficiently well for SSDs, but if something electronic fails, the drive can just die. For a failing hard disk drive, you can still extract the data off the magnetic platters. Whereas on an SSD, the process is very different. And although it may be possible, the process can be significantly more difficult and costly. I'm not going to go into detail about this as you can research how to extract data from dead SSDs if you're interested. Let's put it this way. 
I sleep better at night knowing my backups of my saved files are stored on a mechanical drive somewhere. I can confidently say that most data scientists would agree with me on that. One might ask, what about backups of your digital assets SSD, you know, where you save your samples and raw data? Well, here's where file management and having an external backup is important. Without getting off topic, if you're working with professional sample libraries, you can just re-download them in case your sample library corrupts. If it's raw footage that you're storing on the SSD, here is where not deleting your memory cards after a job is important. While that's a topic for another video, I will answer it by recommending deleting your SD cards only after you've delivered the completed project to your client and not before. This should be standard practice if you've been doing this for a while or if you researched how to run a professional photography or videography business. If you need to delete those cards for the next project, consider investing in more SD cards before you do. So there you have it, the essential reasons and advantages I believe most people should be aware of when considering upgrading their storage space. In keeping this video succinct and to the point, I end by saying, upgrade not just for the space, but for the performance and data integrity. So as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.